All right, closing this out. Great, closed. I'm just going to go back one so we can discuss it. There we go. So, genetically identical to their parents? No, because mutation occurs. So B is true, mutation will occur. D is also true. Due to the selfing Punnett square, if you actually do a Punnett square of a heterozygote with itself, another heterozygote, half the time you end up homozygous. And I'll take a volunteer. Does anyone want to say yay or nay on C? Yeah. I want to say nay. Who's Jennifer? What? Yeah. Clarice. No. Clarice. Clarice. I'm so bad at names right now. Clarice, yes. Nay on C, why? Because it says an individual can be heterozygous when the parent is homozygous. There's no way that you can do that. That's not going to happen. If the parent is homozygous and the parent is the only parent, yeah. then how do you get heter... That requires mutation. Yes, you had to have a new allele show up there. Awesome. So yeah, the correct answer is B and D, which is four. For this one... It was really down to, uh, are individuals always genetically identical, or does mutation still occur? We haven't really talked about bacterial reproduction. This is not meiosis or mitosis. This is something totally different. It's binary fission. Is DNA replicated in this process? It has to be, yeah. If that DNA is replicated and there's an error, does one of the offspring get it? Yes. Yes. So mutation will still exist and create new alleles. Two points here. One is the reproduction, the reproductive scheme of a population will affect the genetic variation it harbors. And two is, I hope, we know why. We know the various processes that lead to genetic variation. And so even when you're confronted with something we have not talked about, we have never talked about binary fission, you can still, I hope, reason through and say, where would genetic variation arise and where would it not arise? Like, there is no selfing Punnett square here. There are no gametes at all. There's no meiosis. There's no mitosis. It's a different process. Cool. Um, La yeah, <laughs> they're so cool. This is just one of my favorite shark stories, and that's a strong statement. Okay, these are called bonnet head sharks. They're the smallest of the hammerheads. They're like uh, three to four feet long. Uh, that one on your right, that's a bonnet head. I actually don't know which one it is. I'd need a clearer picture. But I used to be at the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago, and those, <laughs> you know it. Yeah. <laughs> When you walk in, there's this big circular Caribbean reef exhibit, and I was, I was one of the divers there. So I was with that shark all the time. And so we have bonnethead sharks. Everybody loves hammerheads, and they're small, so that's why you keep them in aquaria. So the Henry Dooley Zoo, zoo and aquarium, 2000, actually this happened in 2001. It wasn't published until 2007. But the sharks we keep are all female. And you could also do all male, that's fine. Sharks are really easy to sex. They have claspers, the males have claspers, the females don't, so you can tell right away if it's a male or female shark. So the Henry Dooley Zoo has three female sharks in the exhibit. One of them gives birth. And they're a little like, what just happened? <laughs> so, Imagine you are a zookeeper at the Henry Dooley Zoo. One of your female sharks in this exhibit that's supposed to have three females just gave birth. Chat with your neighbors. What would you do? What do you do? Do you ignore it, don't report it? What do you do in this situation?
All right. Is Wenkai Gu here? Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Wenkai? Pass? No problem. Totally. That's cool. Thanks for saying something. Um, how about Katie Spires? Katie, I, I, up somewhere. Oh, there you go. Hi, Katie. Hi. Do, what would you do? <laughs> Step one, uh, not my responsibility. Okay, your boss looks back at you and was like, you were a bio kid at UW. You should know this stuff. I don't know. Re re wait, recheck is exactly what the zookeepers did first. Was, it, I think there are three females. First, let's just go to the actual exhibit and check. And be like, yeah, they all look like females. All right, let's go to the record book and see, was there a male in this exhibit in the last few months? Because maybe, maybe there was a male that was just taken out and like, there you go. No male in the exhibit. Here's another option. Did anyone have something else they would do? Yeah, what's your name? Riley. Riley. Yeah, so some lizards, that's totally correct. Some lizards, Komodo dragons were one of the first ones that were found that could reproduce without a mate. Females can just reproduce. No dude needed, right? So that's never been shown in sharks. So possible, but would be biologically novel. Yeah, another option. You could check, like, how new the shark is. So maybe it was brought into the aquarium and it was already pregnant. Love it. So maybe the shark was just brought in pregnant and now it gave birth. Cool, they were taken from the Florida Keys when they were under one year old, which is immature for bonnethead sharks. And so this shark is probably an actual virgin, never had sexual intercourse. That's something they check. Yeah? Far I take far ideas, they had to. Awesome! Check the exhibit to see if there's a related shark in there that's a male, that's maybe a different species, which is a great idea. There are no other sharks in the exhibit. It's just those three lady bonnet heads. <laughs> yeah. Let's do one more. What's your name? Annalisa. Annalisa. Hey, I'm actually sharing my neighbor's idea because I thought it was pretty wild. What's your neighbor? Who's your neighbor? Angela. Angela? Do, do you want to say it? No, <laughs> no, Annalisa can tell. Okay. Love it. Sperm storage. Yeah. yeah, this was actually their first biological look because sharks can store sperm for a very long time. Humans can't, don't worry. But <laughs> sharks have been shown to be able to store sperm for upwards of five months. If a shark can store sperm for five months, that's why it was relevant that they checked where it was got. Got in the Florida Keys when it was immature. It's probably never actually had intercourse. Moreover, it's been in this exhibit for three years. So it's probably not sperm storage, though that was in the paper. The very first thing they mention is sperm storage. Okay. What I'm sure has happened at zoos before is they went, that's weird, I don't know, we made a record-keeping error. But the Henry Dooley Zoo, good for them, brought in biologists and said, what's going on here? Okay, here are the three females. Here are their genotypes. So at the A allele, this has a four. This is a homozygous A4, A4. These are different alleles at the A gene, at the B gene, C gene, and D gene. So they genotyped the three females in the exhibit and the pup. So... You can chat with your neighbors. Question six. Chat with your neighbors. You can get this. <laughs> <laughs>